HBO released a new teaser. We only get a few seconds. Sansa meets Danny. You got fat. I'm assuming most people are going to speak about the dynamic between the two of them, or how there are similarities to Bobby B. But that's boring. I'm gonna go a different route. If I had to take a guess, I'd say that most casual fans expect Danny to be queen. The Iron Throne is mine, and I will take it. But there are way too many clues to King Tyrion, and more importantly, <clears throat> Queen Sansa. So that's what makes this little clip pretty awesome. I need to show that I'm a lone, fierce she-wolf. The queen everyone expects, meeting the girl who took out the giant of Littlefinger, and in time, will win the Game of Thrones. There are clues all over the place in George R. R. Martin's books, but one of the places where we find clues is at the very end of chapters. Oh, no. The final words of chapters. Here's an example, quote, the huge stable boy had a lost and frightened look to his face. Hodor, he said sadly. Hodor, Bran agreed, wondering what it meant. Pretty cool, right? Those are the final words of a chapter all the way back in book one, which ties into season one. So clearly, George R. R. Martin has always had a plan for major plot points, like the Hodor reveal. Now, you'd have to imagine that there are clues to whomever wins the Game of Thrones, right? And there are. Just like this Hodor line, there are clues to the ending hiding in the final words of chapters. We're going to take a look at three last lines that clue us in to King Tyrion and Queen Sansa. One is from the scene where Jaime gives Brienne his Valyrian steel sword in the White Sword Tower. One is from a book-only scene where Jaime talks to Sir Loras in the White Sword Tower. And one is from this scene here. That scene is very important, since it's the final scene in Jon Snow's very first chapter of book one. We're also going to be adding color by layering in a book-only subplot down in Dorne, the Queenmaker subplot. And we have to tie this into Sir Criston Cole, the Kingmaker. You can get more details about Sir Criston and the Dance of the Dragons from HBO's Dance of the Dragons Histories and Lore video. But in case you haven't seen that yet, let's start there, the Kingmaker. Criston Cole was Kingsguard, yet all clues point to him having had relations with the King's daughter, the future Queen Rhaenyra. This is similar to Kingsguard Jaime having had relations with Queen Cersei. So you would have thought that Sir Criston would have supported the King's daughter once the King died. But when the King died, so Kristen Cole chose to support her brother instead of her. This was the Dance of the Dragons, the Targaryen Civil War. Rhaenyra versus Aegon II, at least for the throne. Aegon's side was spearheaded by his mother, Queen Dowager Alicent Hightower, which is why the novella that chronicles all of this is called The Princess and the Queen, but I drift. Queen Rhaenyra shot herself in the foot due to paranoia, just like Cersei's doing right now in the show, and she does a lot of it in the books. Queen Rhaenyra and Cersei both had three bastards, three bastards who died. So as you can see, the parallels are all there. We can discuss the current story in relation to the Dance of the Dragons, but putting the details aside, the point is, Sir Criston Cole was known as Criston the Kingmaker because he attempted to make King Aegon II king. And technically he was, very, very briefly. In the end, King Aegon II died, so that Kingmaker failed. That leads to number two, the Queenmaker. It's very similar. It's a book-only subplot from Doran, which is very different from the show. When you were whole... It would have been a good fight. In the books, Doran Martell's daughter has some similarities to Cersei. She's mistaken, but she felt like her father was passing her by. She felt like he was trying to pass Doran onto her younger brother because she's just a girl. So Princess Arianne has similar feelings to Cersei, who always hated that Tywin preferred his son, Jaime, to her. Here's another similarity to both the Dance of the Dragons and the current story. Cersei seduced a Kingsguard, Jaime, and Princess Arianne seduced a Kingsguard. Jamie's brother, Sir Aerys Okar. Now, the first of the two chapters related to this subplot that we're going to be discussing is called The Soiled Knight. For this very reason, Sir Aerys Okar broke his Kingsguard vows of being with a woman, which means Jamie and his brother, Aerys, they both feel like they've soiled the white cloak of the Kingsguard. Trust me, you think the world judges Jamie? How did he come to fall from that tower? I pushed him out the window. Jamie judges himself way more than anyone else does. They both feel like they're soiled knights, and Jamie literally soils himself when he was being transported to Harrenhal. Jamie is a soiled knight. So Ariane and Cersei had similar feelings about the world, and this concept of the soiled knight further connects this subplot to Jamie. On top of that, Sir Aerys' name connects this subplot to Jamie, since Jamie's entire life has been underscored by Mad King Aerys. And last, both Sir Aerys and Jamie looked at King Baylor as a moron, a moron who starved himself. Parallels aside, let's dive in. In that chapter, the one called The Soiled Knight, Princess Arianne tells Sir Aerys about Sir Criston Cole, the Kingmaker. Princess Arianne suggests that perhaps the Seven sent Sir Aerys so that one white knight might make right what another set awry. 
basically, Kristen failed at being a kingmaker, but Princess Ariane wants to make Princess Marcella the queen. So the second chapter in the subplot that we need to touch on is titled The Queenmaker. It's a Princess Ariane point of view chapter, so she's the one attempting to be the queenmaker. But she's got Sir Ares wrapped around her little finger, so Sir Ares is also an attempted queenmaker. He tried to make Princess Marcella the queen. But just like Sir Kristen Cole the kingmaker, Sir Ares O'Cart the queenmaker failed. Now let's look at Jamie, the future queenmaker. There are two Jamie scenes that we need to look at. Both of these scenes occur in the White Sword Tower. Sir Duncan de Tor. Sir Jamie Lannister. Knighted and named to the King's Guard in his 16th year. <laughs> Four pages for Sir Duncan. He must have been quite a man. So they say. At the sack of King's Landing murdered his king, Ares II. In one of them, Jamie chats with Sir Loras. He shows Sir Loras the White Book or the Book of Brothers. And Jamie names many of the famous Kingsguard. The final one is the most important. The final words of this chapter are about Sir Kristen Cole, the Kingmaker. Pardoned by Robert Baratheon, thereafter known as the Kingslayer. Then, two Jamie chapters later, which also happens in the White Sword Tower, Jamie names his Valyrian steel sword Oathkeeper. He gives it to Brienne and sends her off to save Sansa. I can't accept. Must we forged from Ned Stark's sword. You use it to defend Ned Stark's daughter. Jamie is trying to honor his oath to Lady Cat, despite the fact that he was forced to make that oath dead drunk, chained to a wall with a sword pressed to his chest. Or, as he says earlier in the same chapter, he made the oath with a sword at his throat. Quote, but never mind, Lady Catelyn's dead. I could not give her back her daughters, even if I had them. But what he can do, and he does, is name the sword oathkeeper, gives it to Brienne, and sends her off to find Sansa. And please note that this passage is also the final passage of a chapter. Look at the very last words of this chapter. Quote, the rest Jamie Lannister would need to write for himself. Someone forgot to write down all your great deeds. It's the duty of the Lord commands to fill those pages. He could write whatever he chose henceforth. Whatever he chose. We can speculate what's going to be written there, how the story is going to end. Ariane convinced Sir Ares to do what Sir Kristen Cole failed at. But Sir Ares also failed. This is a clue, though. A clue that someone would eventually become a queen maker. And the fact that this line about Sir Kristen is the final line of a Jamie Lannister chapter leads me to believe that Sir Jamie of House Lannister will become a queen maker. Jamie named his sword Oathkeeper, gave it to Brienne, and sent her off to find and protect Sansa. And she did just so. Just so. Props to Brienne, and props to Pot, and props to Jamie. All hail Queen Sansa. The icing on the cake are the final words to Jon Snow's very first chapter. Wear it like armor, and it can never be used to hurt you. And with that, he turned and sauntered back into the feast, whistling a tune. When he opened the door, the light from within threw his shadow clear across the yard, and for just a moment, Tyrion Lannister stood tall as a king. The final words of Jon Snow's very first chapter. So if Sansa wins the Game of Thrones, we'll all know that Sir Jaime the Queenmaker played his part. And there's still room left in mine. Stay. Gold. Pony boy. Stay golden, pony boy.